countdown timers can be very effective tools for indicating the start or end of an event. For example, you can use them to indicate or show when a price offer expires or when a website goes live or even when a user will be logged off after a certain period of inactivity. But how do you create one? Well, in this short course, you'll learn how to create this countdown timer that shows the remaining days, hours, minutes, and seconds to a date of our choosing. Plus, after it reaches zero, it displays a different piece of content. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Adi. I'm a professional web designer and developer, and we're going to split this course in two simple lessons. Uh, first, we'll write the HTML and CSS for the timer based on a simple design that I made. And then we'll build the actual countdown timer using JavaScript. And I think you'll learn some pretty interesting JavaScript techniques. So let's get started. Uh, but before we do that, I want to quickly tell you about a really cool resource that I use all the time, and that is Envato Elements. Here you can find tons of useful resources like fonts, icons, uh, UI kits, WordPress themes, music, stock photos, and much more. For creatives like me, uh, this is an amazing resource because all the assets have simple commercial licensing and you're not bound to any contract. Therefore, you can cancel whenever you want. So if you're interested, check out the link in the video description. Now, let's get on with the video and start the first lesson. Let me start by saying that this short course is based on this awesome tutorial written by Jemima Abu. Uh, you can find the link to that in the video description. Now, we'll be styling our timer based on a simple design I made, and you can go ahead and download the design file for free as well as the course files if you fancy following along. These will also be linked in the video description as well as any other resource I used. And before we get started, don't forget to also subscribe to Envato Tuts Plus uh, for more free content just like this one. All right, let's write some code for our timer. So let's take a quick look at the design uh, we'll be using the timer We'll be using is this one so it basically has four sections each having a number and a small description four days hours minutes and seconds now in terms of the files we're starting with uh, as i was saying you can get this uh, design for free using the links in the video description and you'll also find some uh, course files and inside you'll find just some css uh, an empty JavaScript file and an index.html. So let's go ahead and open that in a vi Visual Studio Code. And let's take a look at the HTML. Let's also open up a live server. So this is what we have so far. Our uh, design has uh, two pages, right? It has the countdown running. It's the page that shows the countdown and then countdown ended, which is the page that is being displayed after the countdown has finished running, basically. So I coded both of these. The running just needs the timer coded. We'll do that in a bit. And if we uh, take a look in the HTML, you'll also see uh, right at the very end, uh, we have the timer end div that has uh, all the content uh, ready to go for this page. So let's start by creating this timer right here. We'll just uh, scroll back up and where it says timer goes here, this is where we'll do our thing. So for the timer, what do we have? Four elements. And if we consider the colons here, we have seven elements that are displayed in horizontal manner. So the easiest thing to do here is a list. So we'll have a UL with an ID of timer container. And we'll have the following list item. We'll give this an ID of days. 
And then inside, we'll do a span where we put the number and then days. And the idea is we'll be using JavaScript to change the content of this list item. So the, uh, the code that I just highlighted. Now, because this will be changing quite regularly, uh, to play uh, friendly with uh, or from an accessibility point of view, let's add a role of timer uh, to this list item, okay? So then all we have to do is uh, duplicate this for hours and then minutes and then seconds. So right now we just have a list with zero days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Let's also add the colons, right? And because I'm using list items, I can simply insert a list item with some colons exactly where I need to. So we'll do it here and here. And that should be it for the markup, the HTML. Everything that we'll be doing from now on to make this work is write a bit of CSS to style it and then write the JavaScript. So let's take care of the CSS. Uh, by the way, in terms of CSS, I'm using modern normalize as a CSS reset. And most of the colors, or actually all of the colors in the page are being defined by using CSS custom properties, aka CSS variables. So let's go right here on the main content. And under notify form, we'll target timer container. And first, we'll start with a background color. And I have a variable defined called timer BG. And I did that beforehand just to uh, save a bit of time. If you're interested in the exact color, it's this one that you see on the screen. Then let's add some padding. Uh, two rem should be enough. Uh, let's get rid of any margin that might be added to uh, to the um, unordered list. And actually, you know what? Let's do something else here. Let's uh, let's go like this so that we can see the code and uh, the uh, live preview at the same time. Okay, what else? Uh, let's get rid of the bullet points. So I'm going to say list style none. Great. And by the way, if you're wondering uh, how I'm able to create this live server, this is actually a uh, VS Code extension called live server by R R Ritwick, Ritwick Day. So you can find that, install it, and um, you just click here, opens a live server which automatically refreshes the page every time I change the files. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's make this a little bit rounder. So I'm gonna add a border radius and I'm gonna be using the default border radius I defined. Uh, let's also change the color and I'm gonna use timer text muted here. Okay, so I'm using timer text muted to change the color of everything. And then I'll just come back to these spans and make them a brighter color. Then when styling this, let's actually start mobile first, right? So uh, we're actually gonna uh, use the uh, the inspector tools here. And let me just resize this. Okay, there we go. So on small devices like this, I want the timer to run vertically, like so, yeah? And on larger screens, I want it to be horizontal. To prepare, I'm going to use Flexbox, so display flex. Uh, on small screens, I'm going to set the flex direction to column. And let's give these a gap of one RAM. So they're nicely distanced one from the other. Uh, let's also target these um, uh, colons and remove them on mobile because we're in vertical mode. Uh, for that, we can simply go timer container and target the nth uh, child even. So all the even childs, meaning two, four, six, 
uh, will set the display for those to none. Perfect. Now, let's see about that span or the actual number, yeah? So again, I'm gonna say timer container uh, span. First of all, let's change the color. That's gonna be using the primary text color, which is a, a lighter color. Uh, let's change the font size a little bit bigger. 1.33 rams will do the trick nicely here. Uh, let's also work on the line height a little bit. 1.3 should be just fine. Let's make them bold. So font weight, uh, 700. This is for bold. And uh, for the font family, I'm actually going to use Inconsolata and Sans Serif. Uh, this is a monospace font. And I'm using that because when these change, I want those uh, those spans to, to have the same width, basically. With uh, a typical font, there's a noticeable difference in width between the uh, the digit one and the digit three, for example, or eight. But with a uh, monospace font, all digits have the exact same width. This is just uh, a tiny detail, but uh, I think it um, it's important that we we pay attention to these. So this is for the uh, small screens, right? This works pretty well. Now, when we get to 768 pixels and above, this is when we'll start making changes because I want to start displaying these in a horizontal manner. So I have some uh, media queries defined here. And let's just go right here and say timer container. So on screens that are a minimum of 768, uh, we'll do the following. We'll set the flex direction to row. So now we'll display these items uh, in a row and let's align the text to the center. And I want to also align the content uh, to the center of, uh, of the parent element, okay? So I'm gonna set the display to inline flex instead of flex, okay? Because previously it was set to flex, so it was taking up the entire width of its parent. And we had quite a bit of a gap here on the right side, but by setting display to inline flex, we still benefit from flexbox, but uh, the size will be based on the contents that are inside or the size of the parent will be based on the contents inside and not uh, the width of its parent. So I hope that makes sense. Now, let's focus on the span, right? So we'll say timer container span. First of all, I want it sitting above the text of days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So I'm gonna start by saying display block. Perfect. Uh, let's make it bigger. So I'll set a font size of 3.15 rems. Great. Uh, let's also work on the line height a little bit. 1.4 should do the trick. And then notice that we don't have the same spacing between each number, right? And that's because the text below the number has a different width. And to get around that, we can set a fixed width uh, to the actual list item, right? That contains the number and the text. So we actually want a, a set width to the items that I'm highlighting right now so that everything looks neat. So we'll say this, uh, timer container, let's target the odd list items. So nth child odd, and this targets just the list items of days, hours, minutes, and seconds. And we'll set a min width of four rems. Perfect. And now let's target the even list items. And the even list items are basically the colons. Okay, so here, uh, let's do the following. Let's set the display to inline block, okay, to make them visible. Let's set the font size to 2.4 rems to make them bigger. Line height, 1.3. Notice these are positioned a little bit higher than we would like because they align at the top of the elements. 
So let's set a padding top of 0.4 rems, and this should nudge them down uh, just enough. You can, of course, uh, play around with this value. And let's also set a font uh, weight of 300, which is light. So they're just a tiny bit lighter in, uh, in weight. And that should be it, really. This should now work properly and be displayed properly in all screen sizes. So we go from this to this. All right, so we wrote the HTML for the timer, we wrote the CSS, so it's created, it's styled, but it's still saying 0, 0, 0, 0, so it's not working. Let's make it work by writing some JavaScript. Coming up. Let's dive straight in, but before we write any code, let's uh, try to define the steps that uh, we need to take. So first of all, we need to define a countdown value, right, based on a specific date or time. Then we need to get the current date and subtract that particular value from the countdown that we defined. Next is to define a function that makes the subtraction at an interval of one second. Okay, so this just keeps ticking every one second. And then if the countdown has reached zero, we need to end it and show uh, a different piece of content here. So let's write the uh, JavaScript that uh, makes this work. And the first thing we have to do is set a countdown value. We can do that in several different ways. We can set the countdown date as a future date with a 24 hour format. So let's define a variable. We'll call it countdown date. And that's going to be equal to new date. And then we just set the date that we want. Let's say we want this countdown to end at the very start of next year. So 01 January 2023 at 0000. So that's one way to do it. Another way is to set a countdown by adding either hours, minutes or seconds to the current date. And I'm just going to comment uh, these. So we're going to set the countdown date by adding first hours to the current uh, date. So we'll say again, let countdown date equals new date dot set hours. And to set the, uh, the proper hours here, we're going to say new date get hours and then plus how many more hours I want. This basically means I'm setting this variable as a new date that is calculated by getting the current date and adding one hour. If we want to set the date by adding minutes or seconds, it's exactly the same thing. So uh, let's actually copy this bit. So if we want to add minutes, all we have to do is set the exact same thing, but replace get hours with get minutes and then just add the amount of, uh, of minutes we want. But for this demo, we're going to create the countdown date by adding seconds. Okay, so uh, actually here, we also need to set uh, minutes, not hours. So set, oops, set seconds, and then get seconds. And we're going to do this with 10 seconds. So if all my rambling didn't make any sense so far, uh, here's what we're doing. We're setting the countdown date by adding seconds to the current date. So we're grabbing or we're creating a new date and we're setting it as the current date plus 10 seconds. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the amount of... Um, time that we're setting to the timer. So with that done, let's move on. And we'll start by creating a variable called timer interval, and then a few constants for the various um, elements here in our DOM. So we'll target uh, the days element, and that's going to be document query selector, and we'll select 
days, right? We're basically getting this list item here. And then it's gonna be more of this. Let's get the hours and then minutes and then seconds. And then we need to get the timer running section, which is this, which basically shows this content. And then the timer ended, which shows this content. So let's uh, do the following. We'll do this again, and we'll say timer running content. That's gonna be timer running. And timer end content, that's gonna be equal to timer end. These are pretty much all the variables and constants we'll be defining right now. Let's move our attention to the actual countdown function. So we'll define a constant called start countdown. And let's actually run this. We'll say window add event listener on load. So when the window first loads, uh, we'll actually create an anonymous function here that says, well, start countdown. So in the start countdown function, here's what we do. First, we get the current date, and then we calculate the difference between the current date and the countdown date. For that, we'll define a constant. If I can type constant uh, now, that's a good name. We'll say new date, get time. We're using get time uh, to get this date in milliseconds. Then we'll define a new constant called countdown. And that's gonna be new date, countdown date, which is the one that we defined here, also dot get time to also, if you want, convert this into milliseconds. So now we can do yet another constant called difference, and that's gonna be equal to countdown minus now. And that's gonna give me the difference in milliseconds between the countdown and where I'm at right now. Okay, so if we do a console log of difference and we open up the console here, right, and I do a refresh, you can see we have 9960, 9960 milliseconds. And that works out great because I set my timer to this date plus 10 seconds. So it's working, but I want this to be shown in, um, in seconds and not in milliseconds. So what I need to do is I need to divide this by a thousand. So now let's actually calculate the days, hours, minutes, and seconds based on the countdown date that we set. And that's pretty easy to do, even though it might seem a bit confusing at first. So let's create a variable called days. To find out how many days we have in a given number of seconds, we need to divide uh, the difference that we just calculated to the amount of seconds that we have in a day, correct? And how many seconds do we have in a day? Well, we have 24 hours, each hour is 60 minutes, each minute is 60 seconds. So the amount of seconds that we have in a day is 60 times 60, so seconds, hours, and then times again 24, okay? We divide the difference by these three and we'll get the number of uh, days that fit in that number of seconds. That sounds confusing. Let's, let's write some code. So we'll say this, uh, we'll say difference, divided by 60 times 60 times 24. Okay, so let's actually do a console log for days. And you know what, just for the sake of demonstration here, let's do like 10,000 seconds. Yeah, so let's assume that our timer or uh, countdown is 10,000 seconds from now. So now if we take a look in our console here, we can see that the result is 0 0.115. So 10,000 seconds equals to 0 0.115 days. Obviously in our example here, 
we can't really use fractional numbers. So what we can do is take this difference or this calculation and round it up. For that, we'll use math floor, paste that in. So now uh, JavaScript rounds it off to zero. So 10,000 seconds is not even a day. But if we do 100,000 seconds, then we have a day and a bit. Using that same logic, let's calculate the rest of the elements. So we're gonna say let uh, hours equal to, uh, we'll be using math floor again uh, to make sure everything is rounded off. But this time, here's what we do. We also need to take into consideration the remainder from days, right? Because we can't set uh, or we can't have the timer show one day and 25 hours. That's incorrect. It should be two days and one hour, okay? So to also calculate the remainder from the days, uh, first, we need to do this. We need to calculate difference and then a remainder 60 times 60 times 24, All right? And then we divide this by how many seconds we have in an hour, which is 60 times 60, like so. Okay, so now if I do a console log for hours, you'll see that we have two hours. So now using the same logic, let's calculate the minutes and seconds. So four minutes, we'll do again the difference, uh, remainder from this operation, and all of this will be divided by 60, like so. And then for seconds, we'll do a uh, difference, remainder 60. And we also have to close this parenthesis. So the seconds here, or the seconds that will be displayed is whatever is left as a remainder from calculating the minutes, if that makes any sense. So now it's the moment of truth. Uh, we need to place these variables in our HTML. And for that, it's really simple. We target days element dot inner HTML. That's going to be equal to, and let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, we have the span and then days. So let's actually do this. And let's actually use template literals here and replace the zero with a statement where we just say days. And let's uh, duplicate this. So here we'll be targeting hours and then minutes and then seconds. So let's refresh. And you can see that the 10,000 seconds we set from whenever we refresh the page equals to two hours, 46 minutes and 39 seconds. And let me uh, make this a little bit bigger. Awesome. But currently the timer is not running. It ran once, but it stopped. To keep this running, we need to create an interval in JavaScript. And for that, we'll be using the timer interval variable that we created here. And that's going to be equal to set interval. And we'll be running the function of start countdown every thousand milliseconds or every second. Okay, so now when we refresh, you'll see that the timer is finally running. So what happens is every second, the start countdown function is run. And this is calculating the current time, the countdown. It makes the difference. It calculates how many days, hours, minutes, and seconds we have. And then it updates the HTML of each separate element. And as you can see, uh, when this is going to get to zero seconds, the minutes will also um, uh, change here. So watch. 45 minutes and then it got back to 59, 58. So obviously the timer is running. Let's increase this even more to see if the days are being calculated correctly. So that is pretty good. Now, one thing that we can uh, add to this 
uh, to make it even better is to display day or days, so singular or plural, depending on what number we have here. And for that, uh, let's actually write uh, a custom function. So constant, uh, we'll say format time equals, and we'll pass in two parameters, time and the string. And here we'll just return time equals to one, then, so if time equals to one, we need to display the singular version, right? So we can just copy this. Instead of days, we'll do the, uh, uh, str oh, sorry, the time. And then instead of uh, days here, we'll do string. Okay, so let's copy this. Uh, else, we're gonna add an S at, uh, at the very end. And the way we call the function is the following. We say format time and we pass in uh, days, which is the number that we need to insert in the DOM and then the string. And let's do the same here. It's gonna be hour, do the same here, minute. So we're passing in the singular version and second. Okay, so now as you can see, we are returning one day, one hour, one minute, one second, because I forgot uh, to change these. Okay, there we go. So now uh, this is displaying correctly. One day, three hours, 46 minutes, 30 seconds. And of course, uh, if I change this to just, let's say 12 seconds, uh, you'll see that when it gets to zero, or to one, actually, it's gonna say one second. So that's gonna, see, that shows that our function is working. And if you haven't um, gotten your head around this function, it's actually quite simple, right? Uh, for example, on the days, we call the function, we pass in the number of days that we calculated here, and the singular version of this text. And in here, we check. If the time equals to one, then we use the singular, right? So we return this version, which is the span with the time inside, and then string, which is the exact text that we send here. Otherwise, we send the exact same thing, but with an S added at the very end uh, for the plural version. So that's super super simple now you will notice that when the timer ends so it gets to zero and then it goes minus one minus one uh, it kind of goes backwards so what we need to do here is when the timer ends we hide this entire content and we show another one and that's pretty easy to do Right here, after we calculate the difference, we do a simple check. If difference is smaller than one, so if we basically reached zero, we call the function end countdown. And that function looks something like this. First thing we do is we clear the interval that we created here. Yeah, and that interval is called timer interval. And then we use these two uh, constants to target the various elements in the DOM. So we say timer running content, class list, add, hidden. And then we say timer end content, class list, add, visible. Okay, so now you'll see that when the countdown ends in four, three, two, one, zero, it goes away it fades out and the new content fades in. And the style for those is a very, very simple. Let's see, we have timer running and timer end, yeah? Timer end by default is hidden and has its opacity set to zero, but when it is visible, uh, it has a height, 100 VH, it's basically visible and we set an animation of fade in where we just go from opacity zero to opacity one. Uh, when we hide the initial timer, so timer running hidden, uh, we also do an animation of fade out, 
where we go from opacity one to opacity zero. It's a very simple thing. So once again, 12 seconds, because that's what we added here. And when it reaches uh, zero, this uh, end countdown function is triggered and it's now gone. And of course you can set this countdown date to any format that you see here. Either you're setting a fixed date in the future or you're setting a date by adding hours, minutes, or second to the current date. I added 12 seconds here, but I can add like 1200 seconds or I can even add five minutes. So when I save, I made a small typo here. When I save, it's now set to five minutes. So it's just gonna count down from that value. Okay, so now let's do a quick recap of what we learned in this course. To create a countdown timer, start by defining the countdown date. This can be a set date in the future or one defined by adding a set amount of time to the current date. After the countdown is set, continue by determining the difference in seconds between now and the countdown date. Once you determine the difference, calculate the amount of days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Then, using JavaScript, update the content of the corresponding HTML elements. Finally, remember to run the countdown function at a set interval of one second. And that's about it for this course. I hope you learned something useful. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. As always, don't forget to check out the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel for more content like this, but also to learn about web design and web development and much more. Oh, and don't forget to also hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'm Adi, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.